Thank you, Bert. Um, to have you present this means the world. I'm going to say openly what I've been saying to you in private, and that is that you and Giselle have been our sources of strength over the past year, helping hold the rest of us together when we've most needed it. Thank you for being our touchstone since we lost Gwen. Before I say anything else, congratulations to tonight's extraordinary International Press Freedom Award recipients. <laughs> to Ahmed, to Patricia, Pravit, uh, and Afra, I am simply in awe of what you do and how you persevere despite the danger you face, the extreme measures those in power take to stop you, you remind journalists here in the U.S. why our freedom is worth fighting for. Let's recognize them again. <laughs> to the Committee to Protect Journalists, thank you so much. Thank you for your hard work over the past 36 years defending the right to report the facts, the crucial role of information in a free society from one corner of the globe to the other. To those of you here tonight and to those who have gone before you, thank you because this is work that never ends. I am so honored to receive this award in memory of Gwen. And it's deeply bittersweet for me to be standing here tonight with the CPJ colleagues she loves so much, the organization she cared so much about, accepting this in her name. But you know, even as I say this, I can hear Gwen's reaction, hand on her hips, get over it. <laughs> Trying to channel Gwen this evening, she'd have a simple message. We are journalists. We got into this work because we believe people have a right to know, and we want to be part of making sure they do. She would say, bear down. Hold those in power accountable. Don't be cowed. Be fair and be tough. She would dismiss with outrage the talk of fake news. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, CBS News, I could go on and on, the PBS NewsHour, we are not fake news. <laughs> Sometimes we're better <laughs> than we are at other times. But when politicians spread that lie, Gwen would say it undermines the entire public's confidence in what we do, not just in a free press, but in democratic institutions. It's fine to criticize the news media. Politicians have been doing that since George Washington, sometimes with legitimacy. Politicians invariably conflate fair with favorable and unfair with unfavorable. But what's different today is the charge that it's all fake news. That undermines the foundations of the role of a free press. And at the same time, it is a distraction from legitimate criticisms. Sure, we can take that. We have thick skins. Most of us do. But I know that Gwen also believed when it comes to criticism, especially from citizens around the country, we have to be aware and we have to respond as appropriate. After all, we are here to be their eyes and ears. She once said, I live in a country where the First Amendment provides a cloak, but also responsibility. With freedom comes obligation to report without fear or favor. And more than that, we have an obligation to listen to the people we cover and to cover all the people. I believe that many of us didn't do a good enough job of doing that during last year's election. And in some ways, we continue to overlook them today. Most of us live in the centers of power in this country, and we appropriately focus on the powerful, 
because they have the ability to affect so many lives. But we, and I include myself in this, must guard against thinking because we have easy access to information that we know everything. We can't know. We can't know what's going on in people's lives unless we go out and spend time with them and we hear them out. If Gwen were here, she'd also reject the canard that reporters, as you've been hearing tonight, don't love America. She'd be outraged to be called an enemy of the American people. This daughter of immigrants from Panama and Barbados, a preacher's kid who relocated time and again and then had to overcome the stereotypes of bigotry, rose to the very top of our profession. The Baltimore Sun, the Washington Post, the New York Times, NBC News, and PBS. Some critics today might call her the media elite. What she really was, was the American dream. She lived it. For anyone to suggest that people like that don't love America or aren't patriots is unthinkable. At the same time, she'd be comfortable with the tension that always exists between the press and our presidents. It's always been adversarial, no matter the political party. And it's also been a symbiotic relationship. We live the contradiction. We know when we've stepped too far over the line from needing access to losing a clear-eyed view, from skepticism to cynicism, which is never the answer. Finally, one more reason we miss Gwen is that this familiar distrust has grown to a new and more dangerous level. But with her constant devotion to fairness, to the facts, and with her insight, she would rise to the occasion, and she would serve so important as a role model for younger journalists at a moment when we need a compass. So I dedicate this award to them and to all the journalists across this land who are determined to stay true to the facts, true to their mission, despite all the efforts to silence or intimidate them. I can hear Gwen right now saying to each one of us, Keep your head down. Keep working. Now is not the time to grow weary. Thank you.